Hey everyone, it's Paul and I am back to talk to you about the differences between different kinds of Sculpey clays and when best to use them. So before we jump into that, let me ask, what is your favorite Sculpey product to work with? Let me know in the comments below. Let's jump into it. Okay, here we have seven different clays that we're going to talk about today. We have, starting from left to right, beige living doll clay. We have light living doll clay. And we have baby living doll clay. We also have regular Super Sculpey beige. We have the new Super Sculpey gray. We also have Super Sculpey medium and Super Sculpey firm also in the gray. So why would you need to have all these different varieties of clay? Well, it all comes down to what you're going to end up doing with the product. So if you're into making realistic dolls or uh, maquettes, then you're going to want to go with something that requires less painting. So you're going to want to work with one of these beige colored clays. If you're going for something that might be reproduced or that you plan on painting fully, you'll want to work with something in the gray range. The gray is going to give you a better balance of light and dark so you can see proportions and detail better. The beige is going to eliminate the need to paint the entire piece, and it's also going to give you a translucency that's not going to be available in the gray clay. Here. Now, the one that I want to talk about first is the beige. This is the run-of-the-mill, standard, middle-of-the-road, living doll clay. It has a very nice, soft texture to it. Uh, this is going to come out in your sculptures as well. It is a really nice uh, beige flesh tone. You can mix this with uh, darker colors to, uh, to change it using different Sculpey uh, materials. But this clay is, is really nice. When you're talking about the fineness of it, you're talking about the what the material is made out of. It is a PVC resin mixed with a polymerizing agent. The resin is a powder, and the finer the powder, the finer the texture is going to be on the clay. And with the Living Doll clays, you're going to find it's got a very, very fine texture to it. And this will come out a lot in your finished baked piece. Now, the regular beige, this is the run-of-the-mill one, it's just the standard beige colors. It's very close to the regular Super Sculpey, except that it's a little bit finer in texture. We also have the light one. This one is even softer than the beige, but it is a, a slightly lighter color. It's not quite white. I would say it's more of a bone white. And uh, it has the same softness in the texture that you have when uh, with the beige clay. Just a little bit lighter in, in hue. It's got the nice fairy on the front of it. This would make for good bone structure. It would also make for really nice, uh, really, really light uh, skin skin tones as well. You are going to get some translucency through here. Mixing in some flocking or some, uh, or, um, some other tints, powdered tints, will actually help to make the depth of these clays stand out more. And then lastly, we have Baby. Now... This is one of the newer products that we were talking about earlier. The nice thing about the baby one is it is semi-translucent and it is smooth blending, okay? It is the most translucent of the living doll clays that they have. And this is going to allow you to have light that comes through it. As you can see there, we have light that comes through the clay, but it's also going to allow you to have more depth in it. So if you're underpainting, um, you're going to see that underpaint come out more. The cool thing about the living doll clays is they actually become a little bit more translucent once they're baked. In this state here, they're in their raw state, they're going to look a little bit more opaque, but I've found that when rolling out thin layers of skin and wrapping it over an object, the color actually uh, disappears a lot, and you'll get more of that translucency in there, so I do really like it. But this baby color has a little bit more sheen to it, than either the beige or the light color. Uh, it is also, uh, like I said, more translucent. So it's a decent decent clay used for uh, creating the living dolls that uh, is very popular in the crafting community. Now, what is the difference between these clays and Sculpey? It all comes down to texture. Texture in a clay is very important. When you're working with fine details, you're going to want to make sure that your clay has the ability to take that detail on. Regular Super Sculpey, this is the regular Super Sculpey beige, is the softest clay that they have. You can cover a large distance with the clay and still make it malleable, but it also has a slightly rougher texture. And we're talking slightly rougher, but you can definitely tell when you get it in your hands 
whether or not you're holding a living doll clay, which is more of an artisanal clay, an artisan's clay, uh, than when you're using more of the regular Super Sculpey, which would be used more for beginning sculpting or for uh, like roughing in uh, sculptures. You don't really want to use this for super high detail um, because it is a little softer than you would like and because it's got the thicker powder in there, the resin, you're going to get less fine, fine detail than you will with the living doll clays. Now that also brings us to the rest of the Sculpey line. These are artists' versions of the clay, the gray versions. And myself, when I'm creating sculptures, I like to work with a gray clay because it allows me to see highlight and shadow uh, without the interference of my eyes detecting color. And a lot of artists like to work that way. If you're going to mold and cast, or if you're going to paint the entire piece, it's best to work with an, a gray or a neutral colored clay because it's going to allow you to uh, not have to interpret color, which can sometimes dissuade you on making choices. So when sculpting, you want to use something that has the ability to show highlight and shadow equally as well. And a neutral color, a gray color is going to be great for that. They have three different clays that go with it. We have a super sculpy, uh, regular Super Sculpey that is now in gray. This is their brand new Super Sculpey gray. This clay is a little bit firmer than regular Super Sculpey, just a little bit. The Super Sculpey beige has a lot more flexibility to it. The gray does not, but it is a soft, easy to work with right out of the bag clay. I like this one a lot. I was for ever a die-hard medium fan, but I'm finding with roughing in sculptures, the soft seems to uh, be really, really nice. It's gentler on the hands and allows you to get things done really quickly. The problem is, is you're not gonna get a ton of great fine detail with this, but if you're roughing in, blocking in, getting your base structures put in, say even your, your basic armature or musculature, the soft is actually going to be great for that. Then when you want to start putting in details such as fine uh, facial structure or fingers and toes, you'd want to move into either a medium or a firm clay. The medium is just what it says. It's a medium firmness. I would say it is a perfect blend of the soft and the hard clays, when you put them together, you're going to get a nice medium blend. Just saves you, saves you the hassle of having to do it yourself. Now, the medium clay is going to take detail just a little bit better than the soft piece that you're going to get from regular Super Sculpey Gray. But the downside is that the clay is a little bit more brittle once it is baked. So you need to make sure that you use this as an accent. So instead of the base structure of it, because the, if it was the entire structure made out of the medium or the firm, it's going to be a little bit more fragile. So when transporting it, you can lead to breaking it. Whereas you, if you use something like the regular Super Sculpey Gray, it's going to have a little bit more give than the medium and the firm. Now the firm clay is exactly that. It is firm, but it is great for tiny, tiny details. I like to use this clay a lot when I'm doing facial features, just because it allows me to get every bit of wrinkle and uh, detail, skin detail, even pores, the whole nine yards. You can get all of that with the Super Sculpey Firm. The problem is, is that, again, it is a very it's a rough, rigid clay. So you want to make sure that you're only using it as an accent clay and not as the entire sculpture. The, the firm clay is very, very great for fine detail. It is a wonderful clay for getting all of that. Now, let me show you what I mean by being able to capture some of the detail. We're going to start again with the living doll clays here. We're going to start with the softest clay, which is the light clay. If I was to take my sculpting rake, that's this little wire tool here and we actually start to sculpt inside of the, the, the piece, we're gonna see that the detail that we're gonna be able to obtain with this is going to be really deep right off the bat, okay? That's because this clay is so soft that you're going to uh, just sink right into it. Not a bad thing necessarily. The problem is, is that if you just barely rub your finger over it, you can destroy most of that detail. It doesn't take much because it's a very, very soft clay. Um, really good for roughing in, like I said, uh, large structures or for wrapping something that is already firm. But as far as tiny little details go, you're going to get, uh, you're going to be able to put them in and sometimes they can go way too deep because it is so soft, um, or they can be easily wiped away on accident, uh, due to poor handling of your sculpture before it's cooked. Now, when we get into the regular beige, uh, living doll clay, it's a little bit firmer. So when we go to pull the rake across, you notice that the detail is lighter in there. It's the same amount of pressure raking across both of these, but the, the lighter colored clay is so much softer that just the same amount of detail goes a lot deeper, whereas the same 
pressure that I use on this one, it's more of a surface, uh, more, more on the surface, it's not as deep. That's a good thing because this means that it'll take detail better. Also, I can rub my fingers over the top of it and you notice it's not disappearing. That's what a firmer clay is going to give you. Now, when we move into the baby living doll clay, we have a symbol. It's, I would say this is a good blend between the two, the firm and, or the beige and the light, and we can get some decent detailing in here. What's really nice about this though, is you're going to be able to get some sculpted detail in this beautifully. And it is a blendable clay. It's one of their best blending clays for sculpting. So it will, uh, because of the fine powder that's in the PVC, you're going to, uh, be able to blend this clay really, really nicely. And that's why it works really well for a baby as opposed to getting um, fine, fine wrinkles. You're going to be able to get really good blends on it. And it's got that soft feel to it. When we get into regular Super Sculpey, this is very similar in uh, to the beige, I would say. Um, you get some decent decent depth in the in the piece, but it is a softer clay. So if you do move your finger over it, you can dissolve the entire piece very quickly. Now, I'm not even pushing very hard. I mean, if I was to push really hard, we'd just dissolve the piece. Um, it's just a firmness, just running your finger across it. And I ache in it to, like, if you pick up a sculpture to kind of look at another side or work on a different part, you've detailed out one side of it, and then you go and flip it, and you're holding on to it, and you're working the other side, you're going to get rid of all the detail that you had on there. So great for roughing in sculptures, but not the best for doing fine fine detail. You're going to have a very similar reaction here to the Super Sculpey Gray. When we run across it, we've got very good detail, but it's soft. So it you can dissolve it very, very quickly and get rid of all your detail very, very quickly. Once we get into the medium and the firm though, we're going to start to see it's going to take a little bit more pressure to get good lines on that, but I can also run my finger over it and not get rid of the sculpture that we have in there, the detail that we're putting in there. This is a, a allows you to have finer detail that it's harder to delete uh, when you're sculpting it and it allows it to uh, really hold that detail into it really really nicely and then lastly we're going to get into the firm here and this one we run across it and it's barely going to scratch the surface but that's awesome because then when you're trying to do stippling or skin textures anything like that when we're stippling with our rake here you can it doesn't go so far into the clay that it creates pock marks, it just becomes a surface texture. And that surface texture is what we're really looking for. This allows us to get really fine wrinkles um, in the skin without having to work too terribly hard um, at producing them. Just a little bit of pressure allows us to get these really, really fine details. And then it's, it's also really difficult to wipe it away. See, we keep wiping at it and it just helps to, it just blends it in. It takes some serious work to be able to completely dissolve those away. So the firm is going to be best for doing high, high detail pieces. So there you have it. There are the seven different types of clay that are available here. Now, when we're talking about these clays, we, they all need to be baked. Polymer clay has a chemical reaction. It's basically where the polyamide chains combine to create the solid structure. Uh, when we're baking a clay, it is recommended on all the packaging to cook it at 275 degrees Fahrenheit or 130 degrees Celsius. Um, I personally uh, like to keep it a little bit lower, but I cook it a little bit longer. And the reason that is, is because most ovens do not cook at a steady temperature. So I really recommend everybody gets an oven thermometer and you don't trust your thermostat that's built in. But then when you're working with clays and you're baking them, it's 15 minutes for every quarter of an inch of thickness at 275 degrees. I cook mine at 265 degrees because I don't want to scorch it. But the nice thing about that is, is I can cook it for a longer period of time, knowing that it's only going to be at its hottest point where it's ever going to get to that 275 degrees. So it cooks longer, but then I, I'm always assured that it's never going to scorch or burn. The other thing that I do is something called multi-baking. And that's where I take a sculpture and I'll work on it a little bit and I'll bake it and then I'll take it back out wait for it to cool, work on it a little bit more, put it back in the oven. If you are doing that, there's a, uh, you run the risk of scorching your piece over time if you cook it too hot. And so what you want to do is you want to do something called tenting, which is where you take a aluminum foil or parchment paper and you create a little dome over the sculpture so that it, the heat isn't absolutely direct and it can help to keep that temperature from getting too high. Or what you can do is cook it at the lower temperature, making sure about 265 degrees or 125 degrees Celsius, so that you make sure that when the thermostat kicks off, it's at the highest point, and that highest point is going to be no higher than 275 degrees. 
If you're cooking at a lower temperature, I recommend you about double the time. Um, you'll only really be getting the polyamide chains to the proper temperature about half of the time that it's in there. And so if it's supposed to be a quarter inch for or 15 minutes for every quarter inch of thickness, I would go 30 minutes at 265 degrees Fahrenheit or 125 degrees C, or I would go 15 minutes at 275 degrees. But do recommend getting that oven thermometer so we don't have an error there. And there you have it, seven different clays to get you started on your sculpting journey available from Sculpey. Now, which one is right for you? It really depends on what you're trying to go after when you're sculpting. Now, are you looking for something that's got the skin of a baby? You want to go with something a little bit softer. If you don't want to paint everything, the living doll clays are going to be perfect for you. If you're going for super high detail and sharp corners, you're going to want to go with the firmer clay. You're not going to know until you get it in your hands, but I do recommend you try them all. Hopefully you guys learned something today, and remember to work smarter, not harder. If you enjoy what you see here, please give me a follow, and I will see you all next time. Take care.